This was May 15th of 2014. And like any other day, I got up, I got my kids ready for school. And I turned my sink in my kitchen and nothing came out. It was completely dry. My water was shut off for nine days. And it was pure hell. Everything that you took for granted, you don't have these things anymore. If you don't have water, you don't have nothing. You can't succeed in life if you can't wash your ass. The day that my water was cut off was the 15th of May, 2014. My name is Russ Bland. I was a water plant operator at this water treatment plant in northeast Detroit. In this plant, we would take raw water from the Detroit River, we uh, clean it, treat it, disinfect it, and send it out as uh, pure clean drinking water. But everything that we did it had an impact on public health and met public needs. And now I see people who are leading the department who are talking like their job is to cut people out of this system. A system that generations built for good purpose. The city, the current debt, it, it causes a lot of problems in terms of the city's ability to provide services. So the city went through a, a process of cutting and cutting and cutting, cutting jobs, cutting services, till it got to the point where there was nothing left to cut, debts were mounting, so the city couldn't meet its obligation, and basically uh, the city declared bankruptcy. The city has lost a tremendous amount of its tax base. You went from a city that at some point in the 70s was at about 1.5 million residents to currently we're just around 700,000 residents. A lot of that has an effect on your tax base. It has an effect on the quality of life because a lot of blight, you know, came into play. I would imagine in any major city there's affordability issues, but we want to work with those folks. But in order to find out who those folks are, we have to shut off these delinquent accounts and weed out the customers that can't afford to pay, but just not paying. And those that are having financial challenges will have to assist them. This is the water meter that measures the flow coming into the house. The water is going to connect to every house through a pipe that's about three quarters of an inch in diameter, feed in, come up through the floor, go through the meter, and then after it goes through the meter, it's distributed throughout the house. This wire sends a, an electronic message on the consumption to an instrument on the outside of the house that can be read for billing purposes. That's how the system works uh, when it's working properly. I lived the experience of getting bills when there was no water in houses that I, I owned that I was rehabilitating. There was no water usage, there was never even a hookup, there wasn't a meter. And I started getting bills from the water department. There hadn't been bills sent there for years. When I opened the bills, they were for about $1,000 for each of the houses. And it took me a year of repeated visits downtown before I got them to acknowledge that I did not owe them any money. I moved here in July of 2009. About six months after that, like in the middle of the winter, I started noticing these significantly larger bills. I would say the highest bill I had was maybe $85, and that's with the kids maybe playing in the water in the summertime. All of a sudden, I was getting $250, $350 bills per month. For the past two and a half years, I've been battling them while well, my bill is beginning bigger and bigger, despite the fact that I'm paying 
on average at least $200 a month on my water bill. But as of today, they're saying my water bill is $5,400 plus. Uh, this is my living room. Uh, normally I will wash my walls on a weekend, but I don't want to waste the water that I don't have available. Not having running water is the most horrifying situation I could ever imagine, and it literally, literally stinks. I've learned things that I never thought I would have to learn, like to recycle water. I literally will get water in jugs and I will wash dishes and then I will use the dishwater to flush the toilet. And that's something I never thought that I would have to do is to decide between using water to flush a toilet or drinking water. I don't have any pride right now. How can you have any pride when you got to go to a neighbor or someone to ask them if they can get you, give you some water? In order for me to get water that I need to survive, I have to go about a mile and a half to a friend's house. I have to shower at his house, and I literally try to drink as much water as my body can hold while I'm at his house. Michigan is surrounded by some of the most beautiful lakes and ironically people suggesting that people that don't have their water on should go to the river and get water. The Detroit River is slated for you not to even eat the fish out of it so how are we supposed to get drinking water from the Detroit River? Not even talking about the actually humans that they pull out of the river. Before Detroit started doing this treatment system about 10,000 people a year died from waterborne diseases. You're going back to a pre-treatment condition where unsanitary conditions that created the diseases can reflourish and come back because sanitary water treatment isn't being made available to all citizens. People can die from this. The other consequence from this is that the state of Michigan has a policy now of taking children if there's no fresh water supply in their homes. It's really hard on my kids. And then they are always under the constant fear that what if CPS just happens to come through there that day? Child Protective Services. This is very destructive of families and, and destructive of community and I think very harmful to the children themselves. If anybody should have their water shut off, it should be the corporations and the banks that have allowed a high debt that makes up 80% of the bad that the Detroit Water Department is claiming that delinquent uh, people owe. That's when I started finding out about these big corporations that owe the Water Department thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars. This crisis is just growing. Uh, we asked the UN to come in and uh, assist us and to help, and they gave us a response saying that this connection to water services is a violation of human rights. It's deplorable that it has had to go so far that the UN has literally had to get involved. This is something that has kind of blown up because as you talk about the debt associated with the city and you talk about the debt associated with the department, then you talk about the, uh, the rate of collections in the city of Detroit, all of that has kind of come to a head. It's just been that this delinquency rate has continued to spiral and we have to get it under control. What people need to realize is that you could be next. It could be you. You could walk into work tomorrow and get a pink slip and you be in the same position. People's right to water, access to fresh water, it should be a basic human right and it should be 
affordable and it should be ensured that everyone is getting access to this water.